How did this happen? Your children are now 5,000 miles away mm -hmm. in a foreign country, correct? Correct. How did you get from where you were to where you are? Uh, that's a good question. I'm still mystified myself. Um, we, they're U.S. citizens. They were born in the United States. Uh, my ex and I were married in the United States. I'm a U.S. citizen. They have U.S. passports. They were in school in the U.S. So um, we don't know. We were just in federal court asking for relief there because, you, you know, children don't have rights in family court. Okay. Now, so. as I understand it, when this custody, when the divorce came about, yes. of course, there had to be a custody uh, proceeding to decide what was going to happen with the children. Correct. And your husband is German. Your, Correct. Your ex-husband is German. Now, he's not a U.S. citizen. He doesn't have dual citizenship. He's not a U.S. citizen. No, he's not. So you're a citizen. Your kids are a citizen. He's not a citizen. His visa was canceled. Yes. The court said 50-50, joint and physical custody. Mm -hmm. But because he can't come into the U.S. in order to exercise his physical custody, the children have to be in now France? Yes, taken out of their home, away from their primary caregiver, taken out of school early to be sent to a foreign country in which none of us have any connection to whatsoever. So we have U.S. citizens that have been ordered to reside outside the country in France. Correct. Has Daniel done anything to reestablish his immigration status in the United States? I have a letter from the Department of State saying that um, he has not applied. And he told the court, and the whole point was, you make good faith efforts to get back into the U.S. And we're going to send the children over there. I was court ordered to help him get a visa, to write a letter on right. his behalf. He was not court ordered to actually apply. Now, I, I don't practice anymore, but during the time that I did, um, I did a year's postdoctoral training in forensic psychology and worked as a forensic psychology in the courts, often right. trying to make determinations of custody and fittedness of parents. Sure. And there was one cardinal rule that trumped everything else, mm -hmm. and that was what was in the best interest of the children. Correct. Have you been evaluated by, I said forensic psychology, have you been evaluated? Oh, yes, many times. And already. what did they determine in terms of your fitness as a mother? They said I, I was a great mom and I would have primary custody because of the ages. You know, they were two and five. Right. And we had already had, he had requested, I think it was like three evaluations before that. Mm -hmm. Because there'd be an evaluation that said this mother should have primary custody and then he'd fight it or, you know, whatever. So, so. how is this, in your opinion, affecting your children? Well, that's why I'm here, because my kids don't have a voice. Most, most kids don't have a voice in this situation. So um, they're, they're very confused by the whole thing. And as they get older, they're more confused. So um, it's very perplexing. We just don't understand it. They love their dad, you know. And I, I've always wanted them to have a relationship with their father. Um, I, I do, would not have ever wanted it to be this way. So this is, this is challenging for me as a parent because I want us to co-parent. I want my kids to be okay. And, and since day one, I waddled into court four months pregnant with the two-year-old, and I said, I don't want any money. I just want what's in the best interest of my kids.